The retirements and the turnover is part of our systematic leadership renewal. Every election, we renew about one quarter of our MPs, and this election has been no different. Some people may ask, why do we need to renew so many MPs when quite a number of them are still able and contributing well and hard to Singapore? And the answer is, this constant turnover is necessary to keep the party in touch with a fast-moving, steadily changing society. This general election was a watershed. We lost the GRC for the first time in Aljunied, and tactical factors no doubt contributed to the outcome, the way we played our cards, perhaps some of the mistakes we made, some of the tactical moves made by the opposition. But the general election result also reflects long-term secular changes in our society. It's a generational change from those who experienced independence in the early years of nation building to a new generation whose formative experiences are of a stable, prospering Singapore of the recent decades, a developed country in all appearances, to younger voters who have not known a world without the internet and without the social media. So our society has become more diverse and different expectations and aspirations are emerging. There's a wider desire for more plurality in politics. That's the way the IPS study put it, but what it means is a desire to see more competition, more participants in the political process, more parties in politics in Parliament. The tempo of the times has changed. It's a zeitgeist, the spirit of the times. There's more questioning of policies. There's higher expectations of delivery. And there's still a desire for the PAP government to be there to perform, but there's less willingness to accept whatever the government decides is necessary and is good. It's a natural process, the result of the success of our policies, of our success in going from the third world to the first. And it's a process which will continue because our society will continue to evolve in a dynamic and open environment because of its own internal logic and trends, but also because of the influence of the outside world. Therefore, so must we as a people, so must we as a party, so must our politics, and so must the PAP. In a time of large societal changes, Political leadership is all the more important. It doesn't mean that because we are better educated, because we have different voices, things will work out well and automatically by themselves. You need effective leadership, skillful leadership, determined leadership, in order to navigate more choppy waters, a more unpredictable environment, sometimes in fog, sometimes in storms. And you need a team of MPs who reflect the changing population profile and represent the changing needs and aspirations of the people and identify with the people and whom the people can identify with. Given the diversity in our society, this is all the more critical. You have to govern in a more inclusive and consultative way, but that does not in itself diminish the role of government. You need more than ever, capable and committed leaders who are prepared to stand up and fight for their convictions. People who can establish themselves with voters as a team and as individuals worthy of trust and respect. People who can deliver results for Singapore. People who can convince the population to back the PAP and its policies and mobilize them to work together to create a better Singapore. Good things do not happen by chance. And if we want to continue to have good things, then we must see to it that it can happen in Singapore. Without such leadership and without such political cohesion, Singapore can easily fall into the problems which we see in so many developed countries with what they call Western liberal democracies. Gridlock, indecision, stagnation, and many problems in many areas beyond the best wills in the world to solve. 
Therefore, it is critical for the PAP to adapt itself and the way it governs to new conditions. Because if the PAP cannot do this, nobody else can.